Hey everyone, Bill Gold here. I'm here in a test world to show you how to build the best horde loot base in 7 Days to Die Alpha 17.4. I have this base in my private playthrough and it has performed awesome. I am also going to test it on Horde Nights until it is no longer usable. Let's get started. Okay, so you start out by making this elevated platform. Um, it doesn't really matter the size because you can add on as you go. Um, this one's like 8 by 20, something like that. I would recommend making the killing corridor, you know, 10 or 12 blocks deep. Because uh, we're going to put electric fences in there to slow them down. Now what you do is at the end of the killing corridor you leave this hole that's like two by three blocks for the for the zombies to fall down through. You um you gotta put this support in the middle too. Um it'll it'll collapse on you. And then if you add on you can just you know move you can leave those there and then move your supports out and add bigger when when your skills increase what you do in the hole where the zombies fall through is you get these eighth blocks um, the the zombies see it as a full block but of course they'll fall through it because it's not a full block um, so you put one in every corner like this make sure you do it at the top of the platform not at the bottom like it's shown here um, I miss I misplaced that one <laughs> that one's good that one's good and then in the middle here because it's three blocks you gotta have something in there so they know it's a full so they think it's a full block um, what I've found is if you put it all the the eighth blocks on one side if they get running if the zombie gets running fast enough they'll just run right over the the gap and, and get to you if you put them like this, put them towards the center, they, they fall through more reliably. Secret. Now this is the part that makes this base so great is how you get the loot from the killing corridor um, after, they've, after the zombies have dropped have it. So you take a a ramp block and angle it towards the killing corridor and then you stack on top of it yes. that oh, same ramp cool. block turned this way and that leaves a gap big enough you can reach two blocks over like that. from it while you're on that one side so, um, you, so the, the loot bags drop, you, you could really have a killing corridor four blocks wide and reach everything that's what I have on my base but you do this on both sides and in fact if you have two uh, a two block wide corridor then you only need one side so you can make things a lot smaller or add on later as you as you grow your your base
this ring. I like to use my wings. Legs. Now it's time to put the ramp up to the killing corridor. I like to use the wedge blocks. Uh, I don't think the the zombies can do as much damage to the block because you know it's further away from them because it's a it's a wedge. On my base, I have in my in my playthrough, I've left this area underneath open, and all the zombies do is get in there and wreak havoc. I gotta repair a lot of blocks there, so I think putting this, making this solid is, is kind of the only way to go. You don't have to make it completely solid, you can leave the inside hollow, but I would definitely recommend doing it this way so they can't get in under there. There, now that that's done, we can make it easier on the zombies and make a ramp from the killing hole up about halfway, midway of the ramp, so they don't have to come all the way back out to the, hole to the, to the first part of the ramp. Have to run all the way back around right up here. through here. All the way over here. So we're going to put a ramp going up this way, too. Let's start it down here. Actually. That's what I want. I'll put these last few blocks in and do the same thing on the other side and they'll have a nice place to to come up through on both sides you know depending if it's jammed or a lot of zombies or or whatever they can pick whichever side they want to do Man, now they can run up here turn and run up here You're going to need a whole bunch of poles, pole blocks, a few in the in each corner, and then we'll fill this area in with bars all the way, you know, three blocks high. Iron bars work really good. They protect you pretty well, and you can see through them and the zombies can see you to see where you are that way I think it makes us work a whole lot better the setup to put bars all the way around the outside of this you've you've got to put these poles on the perimeter horizontally uh, the the poles in the corner take up that whole block so you can't put anything else there. You'd have a big gap there. If you do it this way, it'll look a lot better and, and be a lot stronger. I got the wrong bars here. I got centered bars. For some reason, the regular ones weren't coming up. but I get the right ones right here. 
Then you just put these three blocks high and all the way around. Now that all the bars are three blocks high, you can put the roof in. What I like to do is is leave the corridor open and put bars between the um, these blocks here, just just along the killing corridor. That way, you know, it makes a good base too if you have uh, a lot of people. You know, you can have a couple people upstairs shooting down. You can have a couple people uh, in the back where I'll stand shooting out. You can have people shooting through the bars down to the ground. It, it just It's a good single person base. It's a good uh, team base. Um, and, and you can build up. You can, like, in my, my playthrough, the, this level that I'm putting in now is my my crafting room and and where my sleeping pad goes and stuff like that and then above that I have a runway for the gyrocopter um, and then I have a, a garden too I'll do a, a a tour of that base too a little bit later on so yeah right here that's all enclosed and then I put bars down the center These blocks just above the supports should all be solid blocks to maintain your structural integrity. They can probably be a plate, and that way you have more room on the inside, but this works well. And then if you, you add on to the side, they will, you know, those blocks won't really be in the way. And they're not now. I have electric fence posts between the support and the wall and I can still get through there so it works fine Now you can put bars along the side here to to keep the zombies from jumping that gap and, and getting into your base. I wasn't sure if this part was going to work. If, I, if you completely seal that off with bars, I didn't know if the zombies would still path to you, but it works fine. They must not see the bars as a, as a full block so they can still get to you. But, of course, they fall down through the hole and have to go back and around and up. Now I'm going to put the generator in and, and all the electric fence posts to, to slow the zombies down. And it works really well. I know people use barbed wire, and that's probably better, but you can't use it in this case because then you can't 
have a lootable base. The um, the way these angle blocks go down, the 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 barbed wire just covers it up, uh, and you can't loot through the barbed wire. So. What you do with the electric fence post is you put, you alternate them. You put one right side up and one uh, upside down. And that gets the crawlers, not that you get many crawlers anyway, but, and the dogs. And, and you do get crawlers now that they've added dismemberment back in on 17.3 and 17.4. So they can still get shocked. The last thing to do is to wire everything up. The right way to wire electric fence posts is you go from the generator either to the electric fence post like this or you can go to a switch first too. But make sure that it's yellow dotted lines going to the fence posts. And then when you take it to the other side you, you take wire from the pole on this side and you stretch it all the way across to the other side and the the wire should be blue or purple I think it's more yeah I guess it's blue should be a blue dotted line going this way and that way you know it's right yellow means electricity and yellow just means that it's a uh, the blue means that it's a, a trap of some sort. That way you know you're doing it right. That's pretty much how you build this horde base, loot base. Um, I really like playing Seven Days to Die so I plan on making a bunch of content so I hope you check out my other stuff too. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.